Welcome back. Well, today I've got a project to do that has nothing to do with shooting, but I thought you'd be interested just, just the same. Because, you know, a lot of people have uh, gas grills outside, and uh, they find very quickly that uh, bottled gas can be a nuisance. You know, it's constantly running out. You don't know when the next tank is going to run out. You've got to have a, one or two on hand as spares and things. But, uh, you know, if you, have, if you have a natural gas or a, a liquid propane gas source at your house that you, that you heat your home with or whatever, um, you can adapt your outside grill, or for that matter, any outside uh, LP appliance, uh, you can adapt that to your uh, home source. In other words, from your, from your bulk tank that you uh, heat your house with or dry your clothes with or whatever. So I'm going to show you how to uh, do that project. We're going to start right from scratch. Um, the basic principle applies uh, whether you're using natural gas or liquid propane. Now remember, you have to be vitally sure that if you have a LP, LP gas grill, that before you hook it up to natural gas, you have to do a conversion if it's adaptable. Not all, not all gas grills, not, outside, not all outside uh, gas uh, appliances can be converted to natural gas. But if your grill can be uh, converted to natural gas, you've got to do that before you can hook up natural gas to it because the orifice, in other words, the uh, small hole which uh, the gas is emitted through has got to be the appropriate size uh, for whether it's liquid propane or natural gas. So that's my caution. And the second caution is, if you're not sure that you can follow along with the instructions to the T, to the letter, and I've, I've worked with uh, natural gas and propane uh, all my life. For the last 45 years, I've, I've been uh, working with it. Um, if you're not sure that you can do this, uh, you should always call a professional. And uh, it's always recommended that even if you do it yourself, to have uh, the gas company uh, come and check out your work and make sure that they can test it and make sure that uh, everything is done satisfactorily and to, and to code. Uh, we always have to be sure we're following code. So let's get started. It's this regulator that's responsible for converting the high pressure gas within the bottle to lower pressures that uh, will operate the stove. So our job is to uh, actually uh, remove that regulator and the hose uh, that's attached to it and we're going to be connecting instead a uh, gas line that's direct to the bulk source which is already regulated. In other words, the, your, house, your house source uh, should already be pressure reduced uh, whether it's natural gas or liquid propane. Now this is the secondary uh, pressure reducing regulator that uh, goes into the house and um, it serves essentially the same purpose as the uh, one on the gas grill. And this is the first stage regulator that's at the uh, top of the bulk tank. So between the two, uh, these reduce the uh, pressure down to uh, an acceptable level for all your appliances in your house. So what we're going to do is we're going to make use of that bulk supply. Now you can do absolutely nothing until you safely shut off your gas supply, turn the valve firmly closed, and let everybody in the house know that you've done this and to not turn that back on while you're working on your project until you give it the okay. Now after you've shut off your gas supply, uh, it's important to uh, test and make sure that all gas is purged from the system. Now this is the hose that's going to replace the regulator and short hose which is in the uh, gas grill currently. and. Uh, it's labeled as a uh, natural gas hose uh, because that's that's what is typically used to uh, convert uh, grills to, but it can also be used to uh, convert to uh, liquid propane from a bulk source. So this happens to have a uh, 3 8 inch thread which will uh, go on to the coupling where your current hose and regulator are are attached and the other end has a approved 
gas quick coupling. That quick coupling goes also to an approved gas quick coupling, which will be which will be mounted adjacent to your grill someplace within within 10 feet of your final location. And this this here has a very similar to uh, air hoses. Uh, you pull this pull this sleeve back, and you'll see some ball detents in there, and that snaps securely, and that gives a tight gas fitting directly to your bulk source. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running some black iron pipe, uh, commonly known it's, it's steel pipe, but it, the traditional uh, term for it is black iron. We're going to be running from the house to this fitting right here. So uh, I've calculated on the schedule that it's going to, the, the length of run that I have uh, should be at least a uh, three-quarter inch uh, black iron pipe uh, for most of the run uh, and half inch pipe at least for the remaining uh, 20 feet. However, and this gas grill here runs uh, very close to uh, 100,000 BTUs if I have all burners running at the same time. So it's a massive amount of uh, gas consumption. But just to be safe and it's, it's for just a few dollars more, I'm going to run three-quarter inch black iron the entire way except for just the last 30 inches, which is going to be a half half inch pipe from two different locations so I can have the grill at uh, one end of the deck or the other. So let's start the project. I'm going to go down the basement. We'll bring you down there and we're going to uh, see what we need to do. I thought that before we brought you down the basement, uh, you'd see what we're attempting to achieve here. Here's the deck to the left and uh, we're going to be running that we're going to be running that line underground to this location right here. I'll be removing that three quarter inch plug and uh, on that T and I'll be continuing with that three quarter inch line straight out in pretty much the same direction. Uh, however, the first thing I want to do is install a um, gas shut off and I'm also because that uh, plug is directly beneath the uh, gas line above it it's going to have to be uh, shuttled uh, to one side. Now I put this fitting together oh it's been uh, well over uh, 12 years ago so it's going to require a very stout wrench and a little bit of And this happens to be uh, known basically as a monkey wrench, Stilson wrench, whatever, plumber's wrench. Um, it's really the only tool for this sort of thing. Uh, this is certainly not the largest one. I, I could use a bigger one if I couldn't get it released with that one. But I can still, I can smell a little bit of uh, gas emitting from that uh, pipe. Not, not bad, but it's just residual gas inside. Now, whenever you can, do some work at the bench. That uh, alleviates having to do awkward things where you can't see what you're doing up overhead. Uh, so uh, you, can't, you can't do everything at the bench, but whenever you have small parts to put together, small assemblies to put together, it's a good idea to do it like this. Uh, it economizes on time and effort. Uh, I've been using uh, this uh, Mega Lock and um, this is supposed to, according to uh, people I know, this is supposed to remain a little bit more plastic uh, and pliable than some of the uh, some of the other pipe dopes on the market. It's essential to use uh, pipe thread dope. Uh, most codes and by practical by practical judgment, you should not use um, Teflon tape with uh, gas because uh, any particles of Teflon tape that might get downstream in the system can uh, clog up orifices and uh, really cause a problem. I mean, you can have, you can have a, a complete shutdown of a major appliance if it should get into an orifice, and it's, and it's a very difficult thing to find. Now, I want this to shut by pulling it down. In other words, when I reach up in an emergency, I want to just be able to reach up and pull down. I don't want to have to try to push it upward. It's a lot easier to grab it and pull it down, even if it's with another, you know, say, a hook of some sort. So I've got this, uh, I've got this nipple ready to go. I'm just going to throw some pipe dope, pipe dope on that. And we're going to thread that right in. Turn always with the uh, heavy brass fitting itself. 
or steel. She's getting there, but it's still got a ways to go. You want to be very sure you seat these things because you, you only get one chance um, if you do your pressure testing afterwards. Um, and it flunks. Uh, you've got to go all the way back and start over again. So uh, you only get one chance to do this right without having to undo the whole job all over again. From now, this is a low pressure system. Uh, it's about. Uh, it's going to be running at about um, perhaps 11 inches of water column, which is a very low pressure. It's about uh, less than a half a psi. Now stepping over to the bench here, my familiar old vise, I'm going to kill three birds with one stone. I'm going to uh, chuck this into the uh, pipe jaws that are inside that vise. That's another reason why to, it's a good thing to have one of these. They just, uh, all your life, they're handy. Now I'm going to finish up this job that I've done by cleaning up with uh, paper towel. Do not use any solvents. Absolutely do not use any solvents because at this point that uh, plumber's dope is, uh, that pipe dope is very, very green and uh, any solvents will work their way right into that uh, thread and you'll lose your, you'll lose your solid uh, connection. At this point, if I desired, I have this valve, I can shut that off and I can turn on the gas on the outside, I can uh, put a plug, I can put a plug here if I want and uh, basically put the house back in operation while I get my uh, hole cut out of the sill. Tighten it up gently. Here's my solution of uh, detergent and water. It's 50-50. I got about a tablespoon of each and a uh, little brush. I'm going to just paint that on all those joints and see what happens. The system is now pressurized. Um, I'm going to just quickly open this and uh, apply, liberally paint it on every surface. Let it run right around every joint starting from the first one. Now, detergent can be a little bit corrosive, so when you get all done, make sure you wash it off thoroughly. So far, I'm seeing no bubbles. The smallest bubble is not permissible. Uh, that's, a, that's a gas leak, and eventually with a leak, that'll erode, and it'll get larger over time. Now, my initial determination for the length of the uh, this nipple right here was based on a limitation imposed by this, the presence of this electrical box which feeds back from my uh, generator at the barn to the house. So uh, that presents another issue now. Uh, on uh, close examination of the uh, measurement outside, I did a test hole and uh, going to the outside and it falls within about an inch of the uh, side wall to the den. And that's not acceptable. It's just not going to be sufficient room to work. So what I'm going to do now is simply remove the obstruction. I'm going to remove that box and reposition it to the other side of the uh, bay uh, to this other joist. And with that, then I can install a larger uh, nipple and run it more closely along the joist. So there we have it. I've repositioned that uh, box to the other side of the bay. And if we look over the other side, you'll see that I've exchanged that uh, two inch nipple for a five and a half inch nipple that I had on hand. And that will uh, give me plenty of clearance. And I no longer have an obstruction to get around or to try to uh, See, the problem before was if I got too close to that uh, junction box, I wouldn't be able to access it, uh, take off the uh, cover in order to service the wires inside it if that uh, was required someday. So now that it's out of the way and it's on the right-hand side, I can shoot that pipe straight down about two inches from the joist 
and that'll give me room for uh, joist hangers. I'll just, I just need one because being supported at the uh, exit. And uh, we'll show you uh, exactly what we want to do for making that hole. So we want to take two measurements, an X and a Y measurement. We want to measure to the center of that, the center of this pipe right here. And it's roughly uh, one and seven eighths. And down from the uh, floor above, it's four and a half. So we have one and seven eighths by four and a half. Now, we also have to consider that the pipe should be uh, sloped downward because it's exiting the house and that's an invitation for water to enter and so we basically want to maintain a slope of at least an eighth of an inch run per foot. Well that's easy enough. I have a five foot run here that's five eighths of an inch so I'm going to pitch that down by five eighths of an inch so instead of having a four and a half uh, inch uh, from the floor I'm going to have a five and an eighth inch and that'll give me my appropriate uh, pitch. Now here's a drill bit which is familiar to people who do uh, telephone installations in the trade and it's a 16 inch long uh, by quarter inch drill bit and uh, this gives me a little extra reach also. If you notice the, uh, the, the front of that bit is a little bit tapered uh, and it's a self boring bit. It's got a special uh, wood, wood boring uh, tip to it. Uh, this gives me an extra reach so I can get over the wall and uh, rather than having to uh, make a mark for the center, all I have to do is just simply measure down from the top by five and an eighth inch and uh, just eyeball it over. The, uh, the, the tape itself is an inch wide, so it's easy enough to uh, estimate. I'm simply going to take the tape and go inside and uh, bend it, lock it in place so it doesn't slip back on me. Uh, just go back into that corner and uh, bend it into position. I can see if you can see over my shoulder, I can see very easily where I need to be to begin. And just bore straight out through. Make sure you want to keep parallel to the floor and to the joist. I'll back it out a minute, clear out the wood, and go back out again. Now I'm going through, um, I'm going through some uh, bituthane out there, which is uh, it's a grace weather shield. There we go. All right, let's look very carefully at some uh, choices and decisions we have to make. Now this is three quarter inch pipe, so the outside the outside diameter is is actually about a one and a sixteenth of an inch. So you might say I've got an inch and an eighth uh, hole saw that would be great. I'd have a nice tight fit. But we're not we're not building uh, Parker shotguns. Uh, this is not a uh, metal to wood fit issue. In fact, uh, metal to wood fit uh, in this instance can uh, lead to decay and eventual uh, difficulty down the road. So you say, what's the problem? Well, metal is a conductor of uh, heat and cold. That's going to condense against this, against the hole which is bored. Now, as soon as the uh, as soon as condensation starts to react between the wood and the uh, steel, uh, it's going to start setting up moisture problems and that's going to invite uh, decay and eventual basically uh, rot around it and that's going to invite insects and then it just keeps on getting worse and worse. So what we want to do is prepare for that ahead of time by boring a hole which is not just a little bit larger. I could I could use this I could use this hole saw right here. This is uh, this is it would give me plenty of clearance as a one and a quarter but I want to be able to put a backer rod uh, around this pipe. Now this is this is called backer rod, and that'll isolate the cold pipe, uh, hotter cold pipe from the wood. And then I'll follow up by putting uh, caulking, water, waterproof, weatherproof caulking on top of that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use this hole saw right here, and this happens to be a one and a half inch hole saw. So over here you can see the first hole that I 
drilled. That was a, a test, more or less a test boring to see where I was going to be in proximity to this wall. And it certainly was too close to that wall. I've got to be able to swing uh, my uh, first fitting, my uh, elbow. So I'll be, I'll be simply uh, patching that up with some caulking. And uh, so we're going to drill right through here using that uh, hole as a starter point. Now remember, it has to be absolutely uh, perpendicular to the surface with a slight up, if anything, slightly upward because it's going to accommodate that down pitch of the uh, pipe from inside. And we'll begin. Make sure I'm following my original. I'm using a quarter drill. I have a, a great Milwaukee uh, cordless drill, but you know, at times like this, I'm going to be encountering an awful lot of wood and bitchethane, and it's nice to have continuous power without having to worry about drawing down a battery. So uh, this, this drill here I've had since uh, the early 80s, and it works great. So I'm going to continue to use it, make sure I have my... Now, it's good to bring that out and clear it. So uh, I've got some shingles bogging it up. I've got to get a screwdriver. I'll be right back with you. I'll get a screwdriver and uh, pop that out. And that's what these slots on the side are for, so you can clear your hole saw and always better to clear it before it gets beyond those clearance holes and if you do get it clogged up you simply take the mandrel off and those two holes will allow you to access it and you can uh, punch it straight out so we we'll continue let's see how we're doing Okay, I've gone through the uh, sheathing on the house. That's the next step. Again, we'll clear it. That should be coming out in a second. There we go. Hi, Benny. You want to come over here and say hi? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are we doing? Good boy. Okay, so now we're back at it. We've got the uh, pipe threaded in, tightened up real snug at the other end. And um, turn this. I've applied a bead of caulking from the other end to uh, bolster it up. And I'll just do the same here. Start winding in this uh, backer, backer rod, this is called. And uh, it's used for many applications to uh, insulate around windows. Just work around. Should have at least, uh, at least three or four windings to give it a good insulation barrier. So I'll finish it off with some caulking. So, now, next thing we're going to do is put a uh, elbow, 90 degree elbow. That's going to drop down. I'm going to have a gas shut off uh, available right here above ground. And immediately below that, I'm going to have a um, union. Now, a union is uh, something which should be used whenever you think you might uh, be disconnecting a fixture later on and it, it allows you to service it without having to cut pipe. So we'll, the next thing we'll do is we'll install uh, the uh, the down uh, L and then we're going to put the uh, gas shut off and the union. By the way a couple of uh, notes. The reason we're using uh, what's called black iron commonly uh, it's actually steel, but the reason we're using black iron rather than galvanized uh, is because uh, galvanized is prohibitive for the use of uh, gas fuel lines uh, because uh, it has a tendency to uh, flake off the, uh, the galvanizing tin will flake off and then uh, get into the gas system, which is really bad. I'm going to be painting this. I'll be putting a, a primer on it. 
Once it descends below the ground, uh, then it should be a yellow primer by code to indicate to anybody who's digging that you've got a gas line there. So I'm going to continue along now by installing this uh, gas shutoff. And I'll be back once we get this nipple put in and the gas, uh, the gas shutoff and the uh, uh, down tube. And uh, we'll, next time I see you, it'll be after we uh, have the uh, pipe laid in the ground. Look at this. I've got some smoke curling up from my Napoleon grill while we're smoking some baby back ribs with uh, some nice rubbed in dry seasoning. And the best thing of all is that I don't have to worry about running out of bottled gas because we have a direct connection to our home supply, the bulk supply. I've still got a couple of jobs to do. Uh, we'll take you on a tour here. But uh, off to the right lower corner, you can see that hose. So we've got a 10-foot hose connected now direct to the bulk supply. And uh, that, that hose actually can be uh, retracted inside the cabinet. Um, it's a nice system. I've got a snap quick coupling at both ends of the deck so I can move the grill either side. And uh, for that matter, I can hook up anything that's uh, charged with propane. It runs at uh, 11 inches of water column from the house. And uh, as you can see, I still haven't primed and painted the uh, black iron fittings here, but uh, that's going to happen today. Um, I've already got the rest of the, the uh, supply line that goes beneath the uh, ground uh, all thoroughly painted and primed. So this is the right side of the deck, and uh, in fact, there's the paint I've been using. Uh, it's a Rust-Oleum uh, yellow enamel. And uh, what I've done is I've put uh, about four coats of uh, Rust-Oleum spray primer on the uh, pipe. Uh, anything is going to be exposed to the air. And uh, then I applied uh, yellow paint uh, over that, three coats of yellow paint. So uh, and all the, all the fittings that um, have been handled with uh, the, the uh, pipe wrenches uh, and were scarred. Uh, they're going to be receiving a third coat. There's the outside gas shut off, and uh, actually what you can see there is the PVC that goes to the barn that uh, brings service out to the barn, and also uh, it brings uh, generator uh, service into the house should I need it. So that completes this job. If that's the end of this thing, I think it was a project well done. It was a lot of work. Now we just got to backfill it. It's Sunday, I'm going to take it easy and relax and just enjoy these uh, ribs. They're going to be coming over and uh, helping us eat them. And uh, I'm not going to open up that grill right now because it's, uh, it's, it's nice, and, nice and heated up. So thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. God bless.